Bones are amazing things. They hold us up. They support us. They make us strong. But bones have other uses. In the past, bones were thrown by diviners, seeking out the mysteries of the future. Now the bones are cubes, made of plastic or resin. But they still reveal things to us. As they fall from our fingers and rattle across the table, the story becomes clear. Welcome to Bone Throwers Theater, an RPG actual play podcast. Welcome back to Bone Throwers Theater. Today we're playing a special one shot called A Penny for My Thoughts. I'm Jeff. And I'm Jeremy. I'm Ellie. I'm a guest, Patrick. This is Johnny. And I am Jordan, and I am excited for this game because I am going to be the script reader, I guess you could call it, but I'm also going to be a player, and I don't get to do that very often. So a penny for my thoughts. This game actually is from Evil Hat Productions. They're the people behind Fate. They've also done games like uh, Dresden Files. They recently released a Call of Cthulhu game called Fate of Cthulhu. They've done a lot of stuff. This is one of the earlier re- releases. It came out in 2009. It was an award winner. Um, and I've actually been sitting on this in my collection since I think about 2012. I remember you mentioned it. And I, I've, I've mentioned it several times. It's one of those games that I've had. And also, there's another game that I have about homeless people that I want to play at some point. But I've never had a, a chance. Uh, anyway, so this one, we are all going to be participants in a therapy session at the Orphic Institute for Advanced Studies. This is a hospital for people with extraordinary conditions, and we all have total memory loss. Uh, We are going to be playing as a, uh, we're taking an experimental drug, Memnosine, M-N-E-M-O-S-Y-N-E, Memnosine. So, the the book is structured in a script format, so I can go ahead and read it as we go along, and it will pretty much teach us how to play as we go through the um, system. So, this procedure should take approximately three hours, and we'll use the following material. A facts and reassurances document. This lays out facts about the world and ground rules for your therapy. A questionnaire for each patient to be filled out through the therapy process. Five slips of paper for each patient, along with writing implements. These are used in the first step of the treatment, in the creation of memory triggers. An opaque container for the memory triggers, such as a hat or a coffee can. As the therapy progresses, patients will draw memory triggers from their container. In a bowl of pennies containing at least four pennies per patient. So the pennies have already been placed in the container. If for some reason you do not have these items, please page the nurse for assistance. Hello, nurse. These directions use the metaphor of a journey to help you understand the treatment. Think of the process of self-discovery as a trip to a familiar but distant land, one you haven't visited in a long time. If your treatment is a journey, the two documents provided are a guide to your surroundings. The first is a collection of facts and reassurances. We recognize that someone in your state needs certain guarantees about how the world works. You should refer to this document throughout the treatment so as not to lead yourself or your fellow patients astray. The second document is the questionnaire. Each of its sections provide a sense of direction for a trip into your past. You will fill it out over the course of the session. Take time to review both documents now. Facts and reassurances. While Mnemnocene helps you break down the barriers between your mind and the minds of your fellow patients, it also weakens the barriers between the compartments of your mind. Memories, dreams, books, movies, all of these may mix together. To help distinguish fact from fiction, we have prepared this guide to the world you live in. You may treat the following statement about the world as true. First, It is the early 21st century. Technology, cars, planes, computer networks, mobile phones, etc., have not advanced beyond your hazy familiarity with it, nor has humanity been thrown into a new dark age. Second, the world is a mundane place. 
Its wonders and terrors come from simple and personal things, like the birth of a child or the death of a loved one. Rest assured that you are not haunted by spirits, nor are you tormented by aliens. You are a normal, everyday person. This isn't to say that you might not be a remarkable individual, but feats like leaping off rooftops or reading people's minds are simply impossible. You are not an action hero, nor are you a Greek god. But what if you think you are? I'm sure you could still leap off the rooftop if you wish. But right. Yes. <laughs> you just gotta tuck and roll. Yeah. We don't know if there's something at the bottom. Well, let me just point out our final, our final fact and reassurance. Your condition was caused by psychological or physiological trauma surrounding events in your personal life. So jumping off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> it was not caused by a shadowy government conspiracy or Aww. similar organization. Oh. But what if that is reality? <laughs> <laughs> Again, you're reinforcing your psychological or physiological trauma, sir. You need to actually advance beyond these beliefs to reintegrate into society. I was speaking as Julian. So big brother. <laughs> <laughs> Julian in this game would not go together well. No. We hope that this will aid you in recovering your identity. If you have difficulties with this, you may also refer to how to deal with inconsistent memories amongst the group. Please know that we are monitoring your progress throughout the treatment. Though, for reasons already explained, we cannot intervene during it. Should you accidentally recall false memories, we will collect you once the process is complete and attempt your treatment again with a new therapy group. Our group is to help you remember how to be a functional member of society like you once were. Ever was. Never, ever was. Jeff, we're talking about in-game here. We're not talking about out-of-game. Oh. <laughs> so the questionnaire. It is a three-part questionnaire. And these, the blanks are all going to be the memory triggers that we're about to compose. One, recall a pleasant memory. When I think of blank, I remember... Dot, dot, dot. Part two of the question. What was pleasant about it? Question number two, recall an unpleasant memory. When I think of blank, I remember, now what was unpleasant about that? And three, recall how you came to be here, meaning the Orphic Institute of Advanced Studies. When I think of blank, I remember, then the second part of the third and final question is, how did you lose your memory? And once we have all answered those three questions, we have one final question. Do you want to remember your past? And that can be either answered as yes or answered as no. Now, take a few moments to clear your thoughts. You may be disturbed by your situation, but it is important to remain calm and relaxed through the treatment. We recommend dimming the lights and making yourself comfortable. And these chairs are actually rather comfortable. As you do this, try to open your mind to the thoughts of your fellow patients. The dose of memnocene you have been given will allow you to connect with their minds. As the drug begins to take effect, you will catch glimpses of memories. These brief flashes might seem to be from your own mind, and indeed some might be. It is more likely that they are from the minds of the other patients. We call what you are seeing memory triggers. These are people, places, objects, feelings, or sensations that are strongly associated with a particular incident. You will use them as the starting point for your memories. Some examples are the following. Your mother's perfume, your family's ski lodge, a smooth stone in the shape of a heart, the feeling of being lost in the woods alone at night, the pain of stepping on something sharp and pointy, Write down a memory trigger on each of your slips of paper. Then place the memory triggers into the container that has been provided for you. If this process proves difficult, refer to writing effective memory triggers. And we're writing down both good and bad triggers? The triggers are fairly agnostic. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. The memory that triggers could be good or bad. So, it, yeah. like, maybe a, an emotional thing like... The smell of miso soup. Or 
something along the lines of achy, breaky heart. That one actually has significance for me in reality. Oh, you gotta make these legible, huh? <laughs> Do you need more paper? No, you guys just have to get good. <laughs> I can probably read it. At least Jeremy's writing big enough we can see it. Yeah, I thought about that. I was writing it. Like, oh, I'm gonna make sure I'm writing big. You're one of those guys who can fit an entire crib sheet on a. Yes, he is. He's one of those guys who can write War and Peace on a grain of rice. Now that the memory triggers have been assembled. A bigger bowl? A bigger bowl might not be a bad idea. Next, each patient will take a penny from the bowl, saying, A penny for my thoughts as you do so. A penny for my thoughts. 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 No, I want this one. It's shiny. A penny for my thoughts. Is that allowed? Yeah. He switched pennies. That's you did too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but... A penny for my thoughts. Every time you take a penny from the bowl, repeat this ritual of saying, taking a coin and saying, a penny for my thoughts. The pennies in front of you represent your ability to recall your lost memories. In your current state, it is impossible for you to remember even the simplest series of events. However, as you and your fellow patients help each other, the complexity of what you will recall will increase. The reader will now give his or her penny away to another patient, saying, I will help you remember. The reader may choose who receives it by any means he or she wishes. The person chosen will be the first traveler, a role described in the next step. I will help you remember. When this step is complete, the reader will have no pennies, one patient will have two, and the remaining patients will have a single penny each. So I have two now. That's correct. The patient with two pennies is now the traveler, the name we give to the patient undertaking a journey into memory. The other patients are guides and will help the traveler recall his or her memory. You will change roles throughout the process and each patient will be the traveler three times during the treatment. To start the journey into memory, draw a memory trigger from the container. This memory trigger is connected to what you are about to recall. Read it aloud and show it to the guides. Let them absorb it through the sound of your voice and the shape of the letters on the paper. The stone lines in front of the New York Library. At this point, each guide will ask a yes or no question about the traveler's memory. Call the guide in question. The guides now have much better connection to the traveler's mind than they did when they wrote down the memory triggers. What they see will be accurate, but will also lack an important detail. Therefore, the traveler must answer each guide in question with the phrase, yes, and, followed by the missing detail. The guide in questions establish the context of the memory trigger and the starting point for the memory. They help the traveler begin the journey by clarifying the circumstances surrounding it and the importance of the things that are being revealed in it. So, for example, like a patient reaches into the container and draws a memory trigger reading blood stain on a white carpet. The patient notes that the reader gave them the penny when she started with that she will ask an additional guiding question. So the first patient points at the reader. Was the blood from an animal? Yes, and I had just dropped the stakes on the carpet. Then you point to another patient. Did anyone see you? Yes, and when she did, my wife laughed so hard that she had to sit down. The next question. Were you recently married? Yes, and the honeymoon wasn't really over. Then the final question. Did you go hungry that night? Yes, and it wasn't for the first time. So... I get to ask you a question. Did you find the information you were looking for? Yes, but it took almost all day. Do you want to ask you the next question? Oh, so I point at another person to yes. ask the next question. Right, this question ties into what he just answered? It doesn't have to. It's just, it ties into the memory trigger that he has. Were the librarians helpful? So the answer is always yes. Yeah, I got that. 
Yes, and one of them shared a nice apple pie recipe. So I think it's someone else correct. <laughs> yes. Okay. You said it doesn't need to all tie together. No, correct. Is tying together the goal of the no, game? No, no, it's not. He has to tie it together. You don't. You're just yeah. pulling things that are floating around in his mind and make for whatever work. reason. Remember. It's his job. And his, you're pulling it from the id, and he's turning it into the ego. It has to be a question you can answer yes to. Correct. Okay. Or no. But yes, no, I it has to be a yes to. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. No would be more fun in this situation right now. Did you skip all the way there? That's actually a really good question. <laughs> yes. And the thunderous applause we got was quite amazing. Do you think you'll ever see her again? Yes. But it's probably not a good idea. I'll just leave it. <laughs> Did you leave before the sun went down? Yes, but that was only to get some food. Once you have answered each of the guiding questions, let what you have learned fill your mind. The memory trigger and the guiding questions form the beginning of the story you are about to tell. To return to the travel metaphor, the memory trigger and the guiding questions are not the journey, but what happens before you set out. If you were asked, did your dog die, then the memory would begin after the death of your dog. These details and events are what you are reacting to in your memory. Your memory will begin with a brief narrative explaining how the answers to the guiding questions tie together. The connections may be obvious, but reinforcing them is important. This introduction, however, is a prelude to your memory, so keep it brief. Don't get caught up in telling the guides about what they already know and delay your journey unnecessarily. To do this, close your eyes and free yourself from your surroundings. You may find it helpful to lie down, either on the furniture provided or on the floor. Let your mind leave your companions behind and travel to the beginning of the memory you are trying to recall. When you are ready, say, I remember a time when, and begin recounting the lost memory just as you would tell it to a child or to old friends you have not seen in years. So what is it that I'm trying to do now? Come up with a memory associated with your answers. Yes, so your answers are the skeleton of the beginning of your memory. So, just as a transcript, I remember a time when it was right after my wife and I were married. We were both graduate students at the time, and we didn't have much money. We were living in the crappy grad student housing just off campus. It was our one-month anniversary, and I had wanted to do something special for them. I wasn't going to get paid until Friday, and I had spent my last few dollars on a few steaks, which I had dropped on the floor in surprise when she got home early. She had laughed so hard that I thought she was going to pass out. Okay. So does every single question that was asked and every single question he answered have to be included in this? It will work into it, yes. It's the framework. I have to make framework. sure I maintain that memory. Yeah. So for the first question, he did find what he was looking for, but it took a long time. The second question, the librarians were helpful. One of them even shared a, a recipe for a pie. Apple pie. Three, you did skip all the way there, and there was a lot of applause. Will you meet her again? Yes, but that might not be for the best. And the only reason you left the library at, do at dusk was to get some food. Now remember, the guiding questions form the starting point. It's not. That's just the springboard. Yeah, it's not the actual off. memory. Yeah. So, for example, it could be the details of why I was at the library in the first place and why the skipping involved and who the skipping was with yeah. and so forth and so on and so forth. Okay. All right. I remember a time when I was meeting my five-year-old daughter at the New York Library for my monthly supervised visit. The library was running a program where the librarians would read stories to children. My daughter just seemed like she didn't want to be there at first. She wouldn't answer any questions. She wouldn't get engaged in any of the readings. Really all I wanted was just to see her enjoy herself. 
one of the librarians took some extra time to engage with my daughter. She finally got to answer a few questions. It was the first time I heard that I'd, my daughter liked apple pie. Towards the end of the day, the librarian said there was time for one more story. And she let my daughter pick the story. The librarian told my daughter where the book was and asked if she would take me to go get the book. And we skipped all the way there. And all the kids applauded. It was a good memory, so I didn't want to leave. I just wanted to sit there and bask in the joy I got to see on my daughter's face. So I spent most of the evening just sitting outside underneath one of the stone lines after going to get some food from a vendor. You are now ready for the heart of the treatment process. The actual recollection of one of your memories. This will proceed in an iterative fashion with your description of what you remember alternating with the stops for help from the guides. While telling the story, you will be able to describe many of the details of your memory, such as what other people did or said, how you feel, or what you thought you or wanted. The process of recounting these details and incidents is straightforward. Simply tell your fellow patients what you see as you travel through your memory. There is a barrier, however, between your present self and your pre-trauma self that prevents you from recalling your own actions. Your amnesia is a result of something you did or said, and your mind has constructed this blockage as a self-defense mechanism. As you tell the story, you will be unable to see anything about your own actions or words. You will be able to sense your memory where these moments occur, as you will encounter a blank spot in a sense of resistance. The only way you can regain your memory is to confront these choices and their consequences. This is where your fellow patients, as the guides, will help you. When you reach these key points in your memory, you will use your pennies to ask for guidance. Describe it in the following section. Each piece of guidance will cost you a penny. After receiving this help from your guides, you will continue your telling the story, stopping again when you reach another decision point. When you run out of pen pennies, your memory will be at an end. This isn't to say that absolutely everything you did or said is blocked from you. You will likely be able to remember on your own details of no consequence, like paying for a cup of coffee or thanking someone holding a door for you. It is precisely because these actions have no consequences that you can remember them. If, at any point, you begin to describe important actions you took, the guides should ask you, Are you sure? Keep in mind that they can see what you did more clearly than you can. Your mind will only let you see the consequences of your choices, not the choices themselves. If the guides point out that you are trying to describe them, stop and ask for guidance. Now, starting from where you left off, tell us what you remember. Stopping when you reach a point where you did or said something. So is he retelling what he just told us? No, that's the prologue. The real so, important stuff is what comes now. Okay. okay. This is a mental exercise. It yes. is. <laughs> yeah, it is. But do you see why I said it was basically gamifying our... Yeah, yeah. Background Character questions. building. Yeah. 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 All right, so I'm supposed to basically pick it up from the end point of what I... Something consequential happened after that point. Okay. So an immediate and obvious thing to me is perhaps your former partner came to, to pick up your daughter. So and I'm supposed to about? give away a penny yes. to, in order to do what? Once you reach a point in your memory where you did or said something... Hold out one of your pennies in a closed fist to one of the guides, one of us, and say, what did I do or say then? Uh, we shall give you the answer. You sure. must use this exact phrase with one possible exception. You may choose to admit either do or say if it is obvious that only one applies. The guide will take a moment to look into your memory and then will describe in a sentence or two what he or she sees. This description is called guidance and it describes what you did or said. Memnocene gives the guides keen insight into your lost memory and allows them to transcend your trauma. 
Due to the difficulty in peering deeply into your innermost memories, however, their vision is not perfect. Any number of false images might appear in your mind. Childhood hopes and dreams, jumbled memories of other events, even snippets from works of fiction. As a safeguard against the possibility of error, you will ask a second guide to help you. Once the first guide has spoken, turn to another guide, present the same closed fist to him or her, and say, or was it? That person will then go through the same process of providing guidance. One of these two pieces of guidance is correct, and it is up to you to determine which one. <laughs> the guide's insights may be very different, or they might be quite similar. One will feel right to you. It may be pleasant. It may be painful but you will know deep down which one truly happened. Once you have searched within yourself and found the answer, say, yes, I remember now, and repeat the correct guidance word for word. So as a word to the guides, be sure to keep that brief and easy to remember. And then the coin would pass to that person? Yes. So okay. the person who is truthful or accurate, we'll say accurate, gets the coin that you give them. And then I would do that again. For you do that at another point. Your memory is done when all of the coins are used. Okay. So you're only giving away one coin right now. When he reaches a point in his narrative where he needs to have a specific memory. But I will continue that, and then I will give one away, then do continue on, because I have a second one to do. For a second part of the memory. Yeah, so I'll give away that one as well. So the further we go into the stories, the more coins, the more coins, the more coins we'll have, so the longer the stories will be. All right. So, for example, if you look at the questionnaire, recall a pleasant memory costs two pennies. Recall an unpleasant memory costs three pennies. And recall how you came to be here costs four pennies, representing how difficult of a, the actual progression to the, the difficult point that puts you in this position actually is. With the knowledge of your past words and deeds, you will find you are able to continue the story, describing what consequences your action had on you, those around you, and the world at large. As a traveler, you may find it difficult to accept the guidance that your companions provide. This is understandable. Your own <laughs> mind is trying to prevent you from retracing the steps of your past self. To prevent this, repeat the guidance verbatim and do not alter or contradict it as you recount your memory. All right. So picking up from sitting underneath the stone line. Dust turned into twilight, and then pull on out night. I don't recall how long I was sitting there, or even if I was focused on anything that was going on around me. I just remember hearing a voice, looking up and seeing a bright light shining in my face, and hearing, Sir, you're gonna to need to come with us. Answer some questions about what happened here earlier today. The light of the flashlight came down off my face and saw an officer standing in front of me. What did I do or say? What did you do or say? You put down the wine bottle that you had in the bag. And you say, I don't have to go anywhere. I don't have to go anywhere. Uh -oh. Or was it? I don't have to do anything with what you're saying. No, yeah, exactly. It can be, it's completely okay. it can be different. completely separate. Yes. Yeah. Just as a response to what I said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were alone, correct? I did not Is describe anybody else there. Yeah. Well, that you remember. The only people you know are there are him and the police officer. With right. The okay, so I can add stuff like that into the story then. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's got to be brief. And easy so that he can easily remember. remember. Yes. Because he has to quote you. Okay. And it's got to be a choice that I made. Yes. And this is supposed to be a happy memory. Oh, it is? Yes. Your first memory is supposed to be a happy oh, memory. Oh, I did not know that. Oh, that okay. Recall a pleasant memory. Okay. I, I guess I missed that part. Yes. <laughs> I was focusing on all the other details in this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that one yes. part. So, oh, yeah. So that's going to be tough. Yeah. Sorry. Some of us got that memory. And I presented a fairly negative option yes, at the moment, did. but you still have another coin in so who knows what could happen. You turn to your daughter and tell her 
I'll be back in a moment. I'll be back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, that was it. I turned to my daughter. I said, I'll be back in a moment. I'll be back in Don't a worry. Moment. Don't worry. So, this is supposed to be a pleasant memory. Yes. But we are in a, like, mental institution, so could it be a pleasant memory in a, like, a twisted sort of way? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm trying to think of how to spin this. Are you yep. a yep. Jeffrey Dahmer? I guess it ultimately like... depends on if your character thinks it's pleasant. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, so the officer led me over to a group of detectives, and they asked me to recount the details of the day, specifically when my daughter and I exited the library. Then they led me around the opposite side of the ambulance, pulled back the sheet, and asked if I knew the deceased. Did I do him say? He said, looks like someone I knew in the past. Looks like someone I knew in the past. Or was it? He said, yeah, I know him. I saw him at the barbecue. I saw him at the barbecue. You know, the one where it was my congratulations to be mayor <laughs> barbecue. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, for, just so I know, will I have to come back to this memory again and, and add on to this again? It, it could pull from other, like, your other me- events okay. in the future could pull from this, yes. All right. Sorry, I'm going to take the easy route. Yes, <laughs> that was it. I said, looks like somebody I used to know looks like from a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> that was just too much for me to try to figure out how to make work. Sorry. That's cool. All right, so I'm out of pennies. All right. Now that you've given away, given away your last penny, bring the memory to a close. Tie up loose ends and explain what things mean, but do not advance the action any further. Finish by saying, and that is what I remember. Then fill out the next section of your questionnaire, uh, where it says, when I think of blank, I remember. Fill in the blank with the memory trigger that began the journey. Then write down the core of the event in your memory. Finally, answer the question listed in that section of the questionnaire. So now, now that you know it's somebody that you used to know, mm-hmm. go ahead and describe a little bit more. It was, at least in my mind, the person that caused me to lose custody of my daughter and to only have supervised visits. In the, in the ambulance. And... With this person's death, the case would be looked at again. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Bone Throwers Theater. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Bone Throwers Theater. We are releasing this podcast under a Creative Commons attribution, non commercial, no derivatives, 3.0 unported license. That means you can share the podcast but please do not modify it or try to gain financially from it. If you would like to visit our website, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater.com. If you'd like to send us an email, you can do so at bonethrowerstheater at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is bonethrowerstheater. You can also look us up on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And until next time, may the bones fall ever in your favor. This has been a Nerd Circle podcast production.